Welcome back to the off grid garage in rainy Christmassy Australia. It is the first Christmas day, it is Christmas holiday and it is raining. It just started. So what else can we do than keep working here in the off grid garage? Work in our battery shelf, but before we do that, we should really turn on the light, right? So guys, I have already cabled here our USB charger ports and the 12 volt cigarette lighter port with 1.5 millimeter cable, blue for negative, red for positive, and have wired all this to our little fuse box here. You can see the red wires coming in for each fuse and the negatives are going here on this negative bus bar system on this side. We've got our main negative connected over here going to the negative output of our DC DC converter and the positive here as well on the other side feeding all the fuses here with a four millimeter cable connected to the output of the DC DC converter. So this is all done and I basically well, I haven't I haven't filmed this in all details. I think it's basic work. You know, I've used these cables here with a ring lock on one side and a flat plug here on the other side connecting to the USB chargers and the 12 volt cigarette lighter. Well, if you are wondering what these cables are for, well, these are cups. They are too short. <laughs> I will use this clear cable wrap system here as well to organize these cables here later on when everything is ready and wrap this around and we also could use this split loom here as well wrap this around our cables and keep everything nice and tidy and organized so the next step would be to connect the input terminals here positive negative of the converter to our go away to our circuit breaker here in this switchboard in this virtual virtual switchboard here 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 there's the switchboard this is what i mean so this is what we are here the 10 amp breaker this is what we are going to connect the dc converter to and also feeding from here our 5 volt dc dc converter i have read all your comments about the 5 volt cable i'm going to pull from the cabinet here when it's mounted all the way up to the garage all the way up there and then down there again to supply power to our wi-fi bridge i know this is roughly three six nine roughly 10 meters of cable and we will have a voltage drop on this cable of course we can of course adjust the output voltage of this 5 volt dc dc converter here so we can set it to 5.2 for example and we should be totally fine at the wi-fi bridge we don't need to have exactly 5 volt there if we have 5.8 <coughs> if we have 4.8 or so it will be absolutely sufficient to supply power to the Wi-Fi bridge. Alternatively, I could have used a 12 volt line all the way up there to the Wi-Fi bridge and then have a little box there sitting with a, another DC to DC converter from 12 volt down to 5 volt to compensate for all cable losses. It would be probably the better way, the correct way. I want to try it with the 10 meter cable and see how much voltage drop we actually get the Wi-Fi bridge pulls only 500 milliamps anyway, maximum 400 to 500 milliamps. And I think if I pull a 1.5 millimeter cable from the converter to the Wi-Fi bridge, we should be fine. Let's find out. Damn it, it's very hard to drill in this very, very soft material here. You go in very, very carefully with this drill bit, but then you push a little bit further to make it wider and you go up into the next step here of the drill bit. And then it's actually, well, it's actually too large now. See, this one would be perfect, but it's just, it's just in between two steps, basically. There's not much you can do. Sometimes it works and you're really careful and you stop at the right moment. But if you go half a second longer, it drills into the next size. So the result is less than ideal here. Oh, wow. That's not too bad down here, but up here, holy sh... You know, this plastic here, this is so soft. I guess it will be hidden in the shelf later on, so... Shh. 
So looking from behind now, we've got the main bus bars here and I've decided to put our load side on the left hand side here and the incoming side for the solar charge controllers goes on this side here. I know Victron recommends to alternate the connections on your bus bar battery load solar charge controller battery load controller to keep the path short between your load and your battery and the solar charge controller and the battery but with these huge beefy bus bars here I'm really not that concerned so I've decided to put all the solar charge controllers on this side I've got my load on this side and I've got the batteries here at the end going down these bus bars here and connecting to each battery bank. If you have a smaller bus bar, it probably makes sense to alternate your load, your charge controllers and your batteries, but it could be more cabling effort as well. So I have drilled four holes into the switchboard here on the top. Two are for the 48 volt supply going to our DC converter over here. And the other two are our five volt output which are, well, they are going out here on the back side of the switchboard and then going all the way to the wireless bridge over there. Also, I will do all the cables from the bus bar to the circuit breakers in 35 millimeters. In case I need to change anything in the switchboard here, I can just replace the circuit breaker from 10 amp to 25 or something and I can still use the incoming cables then. So all these ones will be 35 millimeters. Now you can cut them off here. Uh, can you can you get the um, side cutter for me, please? I or hold this here in this position. Ah, oh, shit. Uh. I will use these double ferrules here for 2.5 millimeter cable. There are two cables actually going into one ferrule, and then we connect this to the circuit breaker here. And before you put them in, you don't need to twist these cables, they can just stay as they are. So the only thing you need to do with these twin ferrules is you have to strip the cables a little bit longer. And then hold them close together and feed them in at the same time. And there we go, there's our cable. Okay, we've now done the installation. So we are coming with our 35 millimeter cable here in the circuit breaker, a negative and positive. And at the top we are splitting up. One cable goes down to the input of the five volt DC-DC converter. And the same for the negative, going down here to the input. And the other positive and negative are going, yeah, here, are going out directly to our Victron 48 volt DC to DC converter and here at the top we've got our 5 volt output for supplying power to the Wi-Fi bridge. And now I'm trying to organize the cables here from the back from the converter. I'm using either some split looming or some spiral wrap later on to organize these cables then. I'm still waiting for this smaller fuse block here for our, for our 5 volt distribution. I'm, I have read the comments and people said, well, it's not really necessary to fuse a 5 volt circuit. And this is totally true. This is just me organizing my circuit so I know where they come from, where they terminate, what the fuses is. I can pull a fuse and just disconnect this one circuit from here, from within the switchboard. But guys, you are absolutely right. Technically, it's not necessary to do that actually.
So we are now going to feed in our first cable coming from the main bus bar here for this circuit breaker. And I made the decision to go positive, negative, positive, negative in this order. Uh, it doesn't really matter, that's just how I started now. Ah, I've forgotten the heat shrink over this one here. Okay, it's actually relatively easy to get in this cable into the circuit breaker, even if it's a 35 millimeter ferrule. So we can have a look at the back side here, and the negative needs to connect to, to number five, because we are sparing one circuit breaker for the DC to DC converter inside. So we are not using this pair of, of um, screws here, of bolts, but this is our negative going to the 10 amp circuit breaker in there, but underneath this one here. So it goes underneath and then up to here. And yes, I will, I will bend, I will bend these ring lugs just a tiny bit down as I have done it with this one here as well. It is on a very, very slight angle downwards and it's a bit easier with a 70 mil cable, um, but it's also easier with a 35 millimeter cable. Yeah, just a tiny bit pointing downwards makes it easier to feed the cable under this bus bar into the switchboard. So just a little tiny bit. Okay, I think I have this one up now because the bus bar is so wide, I cannot bend these ring lugs at all. They, they wouldn't be flat anymore. See that? You probably can't see that, but they are not flat on the surface of the bus bar anymore. They're just not long enough for that. Okay, we keep them straight. This was, uh, this was one with some, some oxidation here on it anyway. So I keep this for future use. And I guess I fucked up again. Cable is too short. It is, it is touching the other bus by here, which cannot happen at all. I think I haven't pushed the switchboard all the way to the front here. So the cable, uh, so it was actually sitting a little bit further back. And now the cable is too short. So it needs to it needs to go down like this. Yeah, that's that's why that's how I would like it. But then you can see the gap here. It is too short. Eh. Okay, I need to make a new one. <laughs> this is not my day today. I don't know why. Okay. Also, I want to show you something here. You see the strands inside this cable here. Um, what we have here with the circuit breaker is a relatively sharp bend here, right at the beginning of the cable. So if I put my thumb here and bend it, see what the strands are doing inside? See how they are moving? Depending on how I move the cable here. And this is because of the sharp radius we put into the cable here. So the strands on the inside of the radius here, they are actually getting pushed out. And the strands on the outside of the radius, they are being pulled into the cable. So because you don't want to put any additional stress on the strands inside the cable here, it is actually wise before, before we crimp the ferrule on it to put the cable in the actual bend and then crimp it. So, so there's no stress on the single strands then, because this will be the final shape of the cable anyway. Someone actually left a comment about this under one of my videos, so I thought it's worth mentioning here if you have these multi-stranded cables Make sure they are in the right shape before you crimp them to avoid any stress on the strands. So we have now made our first full connection here, negative and positive connected to the DC circuit breaker here. And then from there is our load connected. And here, that's how it looks like from the back. We've got here the positive coming out and here the negative going under the positive. Uh, there is there is some space. The problem is I have made a couple of these cables now and they were either too short or too long. There is not much slack here. So a few millimeter already makes a big difference then. It's totally different to these ones here and it doesn't really matter if they are 10 millimeters longer or shorter or something. They, they will always fit. But these ones, they are just dead straight. And if they are too long, they are probably being pushed to the side like this. And if they are too short, well, you actually pull in the whole switchboard then. 
And interestingly is these terminals here, they've got a torque setting of 2.5 to 3.5 newton meters only. So, yeah, I will probably go with a 3.5. It's 2.6. There we go, 3.5. Yeah, and I'll do these ones here with 2.5. This is a thinner cable. Yeah, yeah, look at, look at, look at this shit. There it says minus V in. This is the negative, oh, you can't see it. Negative voltage in, positive voltage in, yeah, at the bottom. And up here it says positive voltage out, negative voltage out. So positive is on the left. Positive is on the right. I hope they have fired the designer. So I'm using the 10 millimeter split loom here to hide my cables because the um, here the, the spiral wrap is, is really too thin I have. This is not the right size for four of these cables together here. It looks very neat and tidy here. Okay, I've got the split loom now here underneath in the metal rail here going into a bigger split loom going down here all the cables coming out This is all not ready yet. This is just a temporary setup here I need to wait for the other mounting block here to see how long these cables need to be and how this all works out here um, But it will be neat and clean and tidy afterwards here. This is all going to work out nicely and I will mount the split loom as well. I've got these sticky mounting blocks here I can put on the acrylic and then put a cable tie around it. So this will all be fixed So it looks more like this then Yeah, and straight lines not as bended as it looks now. Hey, hashtag bended. We've got our connection to the first circuit breaker already I can make more cables now for all the other circuit breakers in here at least the incoming cables I will connect to all the circuit breakers and then we will figure out how many we actually need. At the moment we have only one inverter but this will change of course so we'll have more load connected here in this switchboard. This is all good progress, very good, nice. We've got the circuit breaker and the 5 volt DC-DC converter here connected, this is all done. All right, my friends, I think that's it for tonight. <laughs> yes, it is already night because I also need some time to edit this video, right? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your generous donations during the Christmas period now. Amazing people, very great support. Thank you very much for this. And thank you to everyone else for supporting the channel by leaving a comment or liking the video. All this support is very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay guys, and until the next video, you stay charged and thank you so much for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.